Luxury condominiums can buy or buy buy. Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Re Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Most recently, as reported in the Business Times, BT journalist Jesse Lim has wrote an interesting article on Associates of Money Laundering Suspects linked to 19 units at Canring Hill Pier. In that article, he also mentioned how some of them have been buying luxury condominiums in Singapore from Gramercy Park to South Beach residents and others. In today's video, I will zoom into luxury condominiums and study how well have they performed to date. I will also compare them to other regions in Singapore to give it some context. Before we get started, appreciate it if you can give the thumbs up to this video because I have spent many hours doing this video. Without further ado, let's head straight into the discussion. For the start, I'll be studying all resale condominiums excluding EC for the three main regions in Singapore. They are the core central region, the rest of central region, and outside central region. We usually call them as CCR, RCR, and OCR for short. I'll be using the average resale prices of these condominiums taken into consideration all different tenures and sizes. I'll only compare data from 2013 to 2023, which is a good 10 years for our comparison. From the chart, we can see that CCR prices per square feet was 2054 PSF back in 2013. Prices gradually increased to 2229 PSF in 2023. This means prices have appreciated by only a pathetic 9%. <sighs> we will come back to this later on. As for RCR, prices start from 1509 PSF and appreciate to 1806 PSF. This means prices have increased by 20% across the entire RCR over the same period. This is fair in my opinion. As for OCR, prices start from 1127 PSF and appreciate to 1457 PSF. This means prices have galloped by 29% across the entire OCR over the same duration. It seems that OCR is pretty appealing to buyers in a way. Nevertheless, from the chart, we can sum up that CCR has been doing poorly as compared to the rest of Singapore during the past decade. Why is this so? Let's go deeper into the various districts to find out more. In the next comparison, I will explore the various districts in the core central region. I have broken them down into three main districts. Firstly, they are District 1, 2, and 6, which comprise mainly the CBD area such as Chinatown, Marina Bay, Tanjong Baga to City Hall. From the chart, we can see the average PSF was 1828 PSF back in 2013. Prices marginally increased by 10% to 2006 PSF in 2023. I decided to go further and randomly choose three newer resale condominiums that have sufficient resale transactions to compare with. Firstly, we have Marina One residence. From launch in 2014 to date, it only appreciated by 3%. For Eon Shenton, the price has declined by 4% to date. As for Vion Shenton, the price has remained almost flat throughout the years. Take note, most of the condos in this district are 99 years leasehold. I can still recall many local investors loved to buy CBD properties back then, especially after the opening of Marina Bay Sands in 2010 and the F1 race. The sale at Marina, Marina Bay Residents, Icon, The Cliff, and others are investors' pet favorite. Those initial years were fertile grounds for flipping of options or sub-sale back in those days. There was a lot of hype on the Singapore remaking, foreign buyers coming to buy properties, and Singapore becoming a global city, and so on. Sadly, the reality on the ground is that rich foreigners are also buying, but they are mainly buying new homes and ignoring the resale condominiums. This means there is weak demand for resale condominiums in the city as they are mainly smaller units for investment. If they are bigger units for own stay, seriously, most Singaporeans would rather buy landed property with that kind of money. Why bother to pay for airspace? At the same time, local investors are also tuned to buying new homes. 
as you know, show flats are always packed. The appeal of new homes is always superior to a resale property. Since most investors are buying new homes, so who is going to buy the old resale condominium in the CBD? This explains its poor performance to date. Back in April 2023, the government introduced higher ABSD for foreigners from 30% to 60%. How to buy properties for foreigners? If you want to buy a luxury condominium, you need to pay upfront 60% tax first. This one confirm cannot siam. Confirm cannot do magic. You want to wash this money, also cannot wash. Anyway, now we know why some are buying high-end luxury properties at record-breaking price. The dots have finally connected. Back to District 4. District 4 comprises mainly waterfront properties from Keppel Bay to Sentosa Cove. Prices start from 1745 PSF and appreciate to 1891 PSF. This means prices have increased by 8% during the same duration. If we look closer into the data, Refreshed by Keppel Bay hasn't done too well since its launch with price almost stagnant over the past 17 years. As for Ocean Front at Sentosa, it did decently well at 32% since launch. As for the coast at Sentosa Cove, prices only appreciate by 9%. Not too great in my opinion. Here, I can only say these are properties that are selling a lifestyle and owners there don't bother too much with price fluctuation. Next, let's compare both District 9 and 10. Prices started from 1882 PSF and increased to 2233 PSF or a 19% increase. Is this good enough? Well, if we compare it against the earlier districts, this sounds respectable. But let us go deeper into some random condos in Orchard Road. Gramercy Park, which is a freehold condo, did decently well at 40% since launch. It was launched during a somber market and it ride the wave very well upon TOP, especially after COVID. That is why our good friend bought a penthouse there. OUE Twin Peak, which is a 99 years condo, fared poorly from a high of 3,000 per square feet to a low of 2,003 per square feet today. On the other hand, another 99 years condo, Martin Bonden did well from a low of 2,002 per square feet back in 2017 to today high at 2,007 per square feet. Let me compare them with other districts to get some perspective on the data. Here we go again. The very popular District 15 fair and impressive 36%. Near East Coast Park, near Eatery, near Good School, near Jewel. This is a very livable place in my opinion. Next, we will head over to District 19. It fair a comparable 37%. Very impressive, taken into consideration, is within Aukang, Pongo, Sengkang and Serangoon Garden. Lastly, don't always say I ignore the far north. We are all very wrong. Our Yishun and Sambabang friends have achieved a stunning 44% return in the last 10 years. You all better don't say north is no good. They are the hey ma. I recall Teng Xiaoping family say this, 不管是黑猫或白猫,会捉老鼠就是好猫. This similarly applies to property. You don't need to buy the best property in the best location. As long as a property can make money, that is a good property. Here, what can we learn from all this? Well, the luxury condominium in the core central region have a mixed basket of winners and losers. An attractive entry price is important if you want to make money in CCR. The product itself must also command a good resale value in the resale market. They must be designed for end users to stay and not so much for investment if you want the value to maintain well over time. There must also be demand for genuine home buyers. No demand equal excessive supply, which obviously translates to lower prices. Moreover, if this segment is dependent on foreign demand, then I will be extremely worried. Just like our ISAF, we must have a credible force to defend Singapore. If we depend on foreign forces to protect us, then we are finished. Anyway, I serve my NS duty at Palebar Air Base. I'm proud to serve my country. Happy 55 years anniversary to RSAF. Here, 
The timing of the market also play an important part. A good example is Martin Modern, which was launched at 2,200 per square feet back in 2017. I doubt we can see such prices anymore. Today, RCR condo have already surpassed these kind of prices. This brings me back to my final question. Are CCR property undervalued today? Or are RCR properties overpriced instead? Here, anyone care to share your thoughts here with me? That's all. Thank you for watching and see you around soon.